Prince of the Sea Lord fix one of them. I will call this, it's being recorded. I won't call, I'll just call his first, first name because it's being recorded. It's okay. I'll just call the first name. When the spirit of the sea lodge fixed one of them called Felix. When I saw Felix, I was begging them for mercy. I said, please leave him alone. This is somebody I saw like on Monday. And by Wednesday, when I saw him, he had huge boils. Huge boils all over his body. Huge. He opened his showed me his private part. I said, ah! huge boils. He said, he has to confess to me what he did. So I go back. I said, please, forgive him. He said, oh, in this organization, we don't have forgiveness. If you beg too much, what we give to Felix, we give to you. And we draw. <laughs> and we draw. Now, this is for Christians. Listen very carefully. Yeah. In Satan's kingdom, if they tell you report at 2 p.m., you get there at 2.05, 2 yeah. you will see what will happen to you. They will finish you off. There was once, I don't know if they are Nigerians here, there was what we call the June 12 crisis in Nigeria. There were mass riots all over Nigeria. There was the Babangula regime that, had them, that refused to leave. So there were mass riots all over Nigeria. And I was in my hometown, Benin. And I had to get to that shrine by like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. in the morning. There was no transportation from Benin to Lagos. Lagos, people in Lagos were like stranded. So even our members in Lagos, to get to that shrine was a problem. The police were shooting tear gas. There were riots. You know, there were like mobile police, anti-riot police all over. Army tanks. Somehow, for that like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock meeting, I managed somehow to get from Benin to Lagos. And I rushed to the shrine. I got there maybe like around 3 p.m. Ah, no mercy. I said, I don't know what is happening in the country. He said, no, we don't know what is happening in the country. You're supposed to be here at this time. You're supposed to be here at this time. We don't have mercy. I'm going to find you two cartons of aromatic schnapps. I don't know what you, if you know what that is. It's like um, a gin. It's like, um, let's just say alcohol, hard liquor. So they find me that. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. It wasn't even something more than that. I paid the fine. You see, those people that did not report to the meeting, what we will do to them, you will see. He said, what we will do to this country, Nigeria, you will see. We will scatter this country. We came here to scatter this country. <laughs> so they now come. They say, now, we want to increase your wealth. I want to hand it over to you now. Because the time has come for you to walk into the destiny we've set for you. I said, okay, no problem. I'm ready. Say, you must sacrifice. Nothing goes for nothing. You must sacrifice one very close to you. And because this is spirit, in my spirit, I already knew who they wanted me to sacrifice. I said, no. I cannot. The demons freaked out. I said, no, I cannot. I will not make a human sacrifice. I would rather die. Let the sacrifice be me than I sacrifice one of my loved ones. No. Another pill in my life. So now there's like a deadlock. And at this time, there's a spirit of suicide working in me that wants me to die, wants to take my life. And they're telling me, we're going to die in a car accident. You're going to be paralyzed by life. You're going to die in a car accident. You're going to be paralyzed by life. But somehow, this dream with Jesus, I just couldn't shake it off my spirit. Just couldn't. And then in 1994, I made a flat out, outright decision to give my life to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And that's 
mark the beginning of problems, small problems. Yeah.